Okay, welcome Tina and Alex and Peter and Mark and Eileen and Guadalupe. Um, thanks for coming today. Uh, the plan today is we're going to talk about hypothesis testing for the difference between two means and the difference between two proportions. That's the plan. Um, we've already dealt with hypothesis testing for a single population proportion and a single population mean, and now it's time to do comparison studies. Um, it turns out comparison studies are probably the most common of any study that you'll see. So this is a biggie. Um, the other thing that we're going to do today, which actually works well with uh, the comparison study, is we're going to talk in depth about project two. Um, the exam is over. So for just about all of you, um, you all did the exam. And um, I've got most of them in already. I'll grade them as soon as they're all in, but they, they should be coming in. And my guess is I might have them by Friday. If not, it'll be sometime this weekend. Um, it takes a while to grade because there's a lot of them and there's a lot of questions on each and I have to read through and take a look. Okay, so that is the plan of the day. Uh, let me ask you, are there any questions about anything that you might have? And while you notice, well, if you're thinking about questions, just a note, um, do you notice that th this week there is something that is not due this week? Any of you notice? And it's really the only week. Yeah, yeah, there's no discussion assignment. And the reason I decided not to put a discussion assignment is the whole point the whole point about this week is that the focus is on the exam. And you're probably a bit tired from the exam. And now, if you have some extra time, it's time to start th thinking about the project. So I decided to kind of make it a little bit of a light, a pretty light week in terms of content. And that's, again, one of the reasons why we're having a um, Wednesday webinar. Um, you don't have to worry about a Thursday post. It's not necessary. Um, next week, we get back to Thursday post, by the way. Um, but this week, there is no discussion post. Uh, P Peter said he's having a hard time describing the p-value and the level of significance. So we'll, we'll do that again today. That's the good news. So if you're having a hard time, um, of course, that didn't help you for the midterm. But um, it'll help you for the final is that we're going to do more of it today. So the idea about hypothesis test for two, um, for two proportions or two means is it's not really any different. Okay, then or very little difference between um, one and two. So I'll, I'll get to reinforce that, Peter, and hopefully by the end of today, it'll help a little more. And practice, practice, practice. That's the most important thing. So we'll, I'll promise I'll talk about that again today. Okay, um, any other questions? Any other questions before we move on? All right, let, let me ask you something. It's not a math question. What's happening a year from this week? What big thing is happening a year from this week? Yeah, the election. So I thought I would bring in a um, election topic because it's really easy to bring an election topic because there's lots and lots of surveys and polls done and all over the media. So I'm grabbing this one. Okay, I looked at a few different ones. I said, yeah, this is probably a good one. There are a lot of good ones to use. So let me um, share my desktop. And just a minute. Oh, that's why. One more time. All right, so there's a new poll. And hopefully you can all see this. And the idea, what you might ask, is, is there any difference between how Trump is doing among Latinos now versus how he was doing amongst Latinos in the election a few years ago, three years ago? Because again, three years ago was that election. Now we're starting to think about the next election. So that's the big question. And what they say is Trump holds steady among Latinos in a new poll. We want to see if that's really true. Okay, that, that's the big question of, the, of this particular 
um, article. We want to find out, is he holding steady or maybe he's not, okay? So if you're not holding steady, what does that mean? If he's not holding steady. Yeah, it means that it's different. It means it's different. Could be getting much better or it could be getting much worse, right? So what we want to do is we want to say, well, maybe he's not holding steady. Maybe it's gotten much better or much worse. So that's going to be our hypothesis. So the first thing, and I'm going to go back and forth, um, what we need to do is we need a hypothesis, and we want to talk about a hypothesis about comparing the results from a few years ago, three years ago in particular, when the election was happened, versus the newest poll now. So we need a hypothesis for that. And we need to think about that. And this is different than what we had last week. And what's different is we're comparing two different surveys. And both are surveys. Again, they, they don't know exactly his numbers from three years ago. They don't know exactly his numbers now. Um, but they did a survey three years ago. They did a survey now. And in fact, three years ago, um, it was post, right post-election. Sometimes they call those exit polls. Have you heard of those before? I'm going to have to make an assumption because we don't have all the information. But So let me do a new share. And let's start drawing. So what we need is we need an H0 and we need an H1. Okay, so let us draw an H0 and H1. So let's start with H0. So the first thing, is this quantitative or is this a yes, no survey? Yeah, this is yes, no. So in fact, three years ago, the question was, did you vote for Trump? And the one that happened, I think it was last week, I could read through this article and find out. Um, the question was, do you plan on voting for Trump? And the answer is yes, no, it's not 27 or something. So it's a yes, no question, which means that we're looking at proportions and not means. So that means the letter we're gonna use in H naught will be P. But unlike last week, this is different because we're comparing last uh, three years ago to now. So there's actually two proportions. There's the before proportion and there's the after proportion. And I'm going to use um, B and A on this. So I'm going to say P before, let's call it PB for the proportion before, is equal to PA, proportion, a, proportion after, which is now, by the way. Any questions on that? And then we're going to have an H1, and that's similar, and we already decided earlier that if we want to show if he's holding steady, and we want to say, well, I think maybe he's not holding steady, then we're going to have a different, which is a not equal to. So for reasons that you'll see in a bit, I'm going to have to write equal and change it, So because I can't type it. PB equal PA. And now let me go to my brush. Pop in a pencil. Uh, that's okay. And I want that to be not equal to. There we go. Any questions about the null and alternative hypotheses? And I want to mention you should always state these before you see the data. You should never state them after. So this should happen before the survey is even done. All right. So next, what I need to do is go back and read the survey. We get, got to get some information. And that, that's important. Without the information, there's, we have no chance. So you can get some information about the survey. And to do that, what we're going to do is, I need a new share. I need to get back into the article. And now we can look at some of the information. And what it says is nationally, 
25% of Latinos said they would vote for re to reelect Trump. But that it used to be 28%. So here's the question. Is he holding steady? Is it the same? <coughs> what do you think? Okay, the answer is we don't know. We don't know, this is just a sample. We don't know the whole population and that's what statistics is all about, is you don't know the whole population, you can't say he's holding steady, but we can say if there's evidence that he was holding steady or not. Does that make sense? Or in this case, evidence that he's not holding steady. So we're looking at 25% versus 28%. And then I'm gonna scroll down a little more because I give the information. This is sometimes the reason why I pick a certain article because I can find right here. The survey questioned 1,000 Latinos. Okay. October 24th to 28th is a pretty recent poll. And they surveyed 1,000 Latinos. So there's our sample size. Okay. And I'm going to make the assumption, which may or may not be true, but I'm going to make the assumption that three years ago they also surveyed 1,000 Latinos. It's probably a little different, but that's all I've got. I don't have the information on it. And that happens sometimes when you're reading articles. But it's probably around that. That's a standard amount. So if it's not 1,000, it might be 1,010 or something. But I'm just going to make the assumption it was 1,000 last time. So any questions so far? Okay, now I'm going to share my desktop again, but with a different screen. And that is the calculator. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to stat. We're going to test. Okay, that's the button for this entire class. I mean, we have some other buttons that are important too, but this one's going to come up. It's been coming up now a couple weeks, and it'll keep coming the rest of the course. And now what we got to do is got to say, what test are we going to use here? Any thoughts, just kind of based on looking at the menus here. We haven't used this test yet, but do you see the calculator and which one might you use? Yeah, this is going to be a two prop Z test. Okay, and I just want to dissect what these pieces of two prop Z test are. First thing, two. Okay, two means that we're, we had two different populations that we're comparing. And those populations are the population from 2016 to the population from last week, basically, or two weeks ago, whenever they did that survey. So that's why the two. Prop, because it's a yes or no question. We have P's in our hypothesis test. We saw that. That means it's prop. Z we can do because our N was 1,000. Our P was 0.25 and 0.28. And if you do NP, you get 250 and 280. If you do NQ, you get even bigger numbers. And what's important about those numbers? How big do they have to be to be able to use this test? Yeah, bigger than five, actually. Okay, they have to be greater than five. And that's four different things now have to be greater than five. You have to have NP for before. NQ for before, NP for today, and NQ for today. Okay, but we do, there's no problem. A big enough sample, if you get it again, 250, 280, and bigger than that. So they're way bigger than five. And then test, because we have a hypothesis test. By the way, I wanna scroll down a little bit. You'll see two prop Z int, if you want to do a confidence interval, because you can also do a confidence interval for the difference between proportions. But we are doing a hypothesis test here. So two prop Z test, I hit enter. Then our P naught here is what we're basically, oh, sorry, I missed. One more try. Thought it was on two prop, one more try. There it is. I think I hit the button too much. Much better. So then we have X1. What's X1 here?
Any guess? Any guess? What number? It's a number. Yeah, but what is it? Do you remember? 25, good guess. Um, but the 25% actually is now in the, and the X1 is before. That was 28%, but it's not 28 because it's 28% of 1,000, which is 280. Another reason I chose this article is I didn't have to worry about hard calculation. It's 28% of 1,000, 0.28 times 1,000 is 280. So that's 280. And then N1 was 1,000. X2, what's that? You might be able to tell me what X2 is. Yeah, that's 250, because that's 25% of 1,000, so 250. And again, 1,000. We're just going to assume the surveys are both the same. Any questions on that? Okay, we do want P1 not equal to P2, so we hit enter on the not equal to. Color, don't worry about. And then I hit enter on calculate. And what do we see? What do we call this Z equals 1.52? What's that called? And you remember what you call that, two words? It's not a z-score, actually. It's a good try. I've been asking you for this kind of thing. On, it's not the standard error. Also a good try. I've been asking you this on some of the homework problems. It's called the test statistic. Do you remember that? So that z equals 1.52 is a test statistic. OK, the p-value is 0.1285 or about 0.13 is good enough for us. What's important about this p-value of 0.13? What do we do with that? So we have a p-value of 0.13. What can, we, what can we say because of that? Do you remember? Again, the idea is this is the same as chapter nine. Any thoughts? Okay, we need to compare it with a level of significance. And if you remember, th this is 13%. And level of significance in our class is either going to be 1%, 5%, or 10%. Doesn't matter which one you choose, 13% is bigger. So what that tells us is that there is in sufficient or statistically insignificant evidence. So let me go back and let's write down our conclusions. So let me go to new share, go back to my paint. And what we can say, a little bit smaller, we have a lot to write. There is statistically insignificant evidence to make a conclusion whether there is a difference between the population proportion of Americans, I'm going to just say favoring Trump, now versus 2016. Any questions? Any questions on this particular conclusion? Any questions? All right, so now I am going to answer Peter's earlier question, and that is, let's go for level of significance, and then we'll do p-value. 
So let's interpret the level of significance. Um, let's use a 5%. Politics always uses 5%, by the way. So that's what we should use. Okay, and the way the level of significance goes is you start out by restating H naught. H naught is PB equals PA. So if the population proportion of Americans who favor Trump now, not true Trump, but now is the same as it was in 2016. And if we surveyed another 1,000 Americans in 2016, not that that's easy to do, but let's pretend that there was another survey we didn't even know about before we even found out about it. And now, then there would be a 5% chance that we would end up falsely concluding. Okay, so again, we were saying that if it was the same then and now, then it's the probability that we're going to end up saying, no, it's not. Okay, so falsely concluding that the population proportion of Americans who favor Trump now is not the same, okay? Or maybe even better is differs from what it was in 2016. So I know, Peter, you had some questions about this. Does it make sense the way I've written it? So you'll notice you start out with H naught, and then you say, and you did the other, another, a new study with the same sample size, then there's that 5% chance that you're going to end up falsely saying that it, H1 is true. Yeah, this is level of significance. 5% is level of significance. Any questions on that? All right. Peter asked for a p-value interpretation, so let me give you one of those too. Actually, before I do that, uh, it might be too late. Yeah, unfortunately, you already took the exam, but you know, do what you can. All right, so let me, um, I'm not able to grab that, but what I can do is I can select, the idea is the first two lines don't change. So I don't have to retype it at all. Whoa. That was interesting. Okay. So now what we can say is that if the population proportion of Americans who favor Trump now is the same as it was in 2016. And if we surveyed another 1,000 Americans in 2016 and now, then there would, I better make the font bigger. Things got weird. That's still too big. Try 20. BA. So now it wasn't a 5%. Do you remember the p-value was 13, 0.13. 13% chance that the, that this new survey, okay. Actually, I should say different because we're still looking at 2016 also. Mm 
would result in a difference of at least 3%. for those who used to fit, who favored Trump in 2016 and now. Where did I get that 3%? Any thoughts? Where did that 3% come from? Any thoughts? All right, let me go back to the article because it's from the article. Okay, it's all in there. So let me go to the article and if you look at those lines. Yeah, it's 28% minus 25% is 3%. So what we found in our study is that there was a 3% difference. And the p-value was 0.13 or 13%. So we're gonna say that there's a 13% chance, 13 chance that if you did a new study, okay, if, if Trump supporters and, um, have been the same for the last three years amongst Latinos and did a new study, then there'd be at least a 13% chance that we'd get at least a 3% difference because that's what we got in our in this study. Any questions at all on how I interpreted this difference between population proportions idea? I want to go back to what I'd written because I want to mention a couple more things. Notice some very important things that are, you need to do and you need to understand. Population proportion, population proportion. Okay, that needs to happen. Okay, if you're not referring to the population proportion, that's not so good. On the other hand, this 3% is not about the population proportion, that's about the sample proportions. So that is important because we're only talking about the survey and not the whole population. So it's very important that you get straight when you're talking about the population and when you're talking about the sample. It's a big issue people have. The other thing is it's proportion and not means. If you have a quantitative question, it's means and not proportions. And I do take off points if you get those confused. Any questions at all on this example? Okay, let me do another example. I'm going to erase this. And let me put a new example in. Yeah, the p hat at the bottom was uh, 0.265, which was a 3% difference. I think. Let me look at my calculator and double check, but let's see. Actually, p1 hat was 0.28. Uh, that p hat, the 0.265, that actually is not that important now that I'm looking at my calculator. Yeah, that's not what that was, by the way, Tina. What that 0.265 was, was the median of the two proportions. Yeah, which we're not gonna use in this class, but that's what it is. So if you look at 28% and 25%, you take the average of those, you get 26.5%, which we don't have to worry about in our class. Okay, 
hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's do a new question. Here's a new problem. A manager wanted to see if people spend more money in her gift shop if they're given a free piece of candy when they enter the store. Below are the receipts from the 12 customers who were given candy and the 12 who were not given candy. And what we want to do is we want to come up with the null on the of hypotheses. We need to find the p-value. We need to state our conclusions. All right. So the first thing to note is when you look at the survey question, is it a yes, no survey question or is it quantitative numbers? Yeah, this one's quantitative and it should be really clear because the first answer was 25. Second answer was 37 and then 14, then 51. Those aren't yeses and nos. So this is quantitative, so we're not talking about p's anymore. Now we're talking about mu's. The next question, this is really important and this is confusing for a lot of people, is we have these two groups, candy group and no group. Are they related to each other? So is this 25 related to the 37? Say more than the 25 might be related to the 51. Yeah, there's no relationship at all. It's just a bunch of people that got candy and a bunch of people that didn't get candy. Okay, these aren't, this is not, these aren't dependent data, it's not paired. So that means that we're gonna do a independent sample t-test. And the way you do that in terms of the hypotheses, actually let me get the brush on this one. We're gonna have an H naught And that's going to be a mu because remember we decide this is quantitative, so that means it's mu. How about mu c for the candy mean is equal to mu n for the no candy mu n. Any questions on H naught? Okay, then we have H1. And that's going to be a mu c. We're going to have a mu n. And what inequality do we have in between? And there's a key word here in the question. So what inequality do I have? There's always three chat questions, the cho choices. There's less than, greater than, or not equal to. Yeah, this one, the key word here is more. And when you have a more, more with candy, that means you're going to have a greater than. But you do have to look at the words of the question. It's not a trick question, but you got to look for the words. Any questions on this? Okay, so the next thing I do is I go to my calculator. Now I'm ready to find my p-value. Okay, and let's do that. So here's my calculator. And I'm going to get a stat. I need to enter my data. So I have edit. I need to clear out L1. I need to clear out L2. And then I just type in the numbers. We have 25. Then we have 14. Then we have 160. Second. There it is. So 160. And then we had 98. And then we had 55. 18. 29, 44, 91. And I always recommend you do this with me with your calculator. 83, 17, 32. And then for L2, we had 37, 51, 49, 
40, 37, 40 again, 22, 21, 9, 30, 28, 19, 11. Then we're going to go to um, stat and then tests. Which test this time? Any thoughts? And as my promise a, long time, a few weeks ago, is we're going to go through pretty much all of these in the quarter. So what test am I going to use on the calculator? See all jumping in, so maybe I'll tell you. Okay, notice that there are two different populations. There's a population of people who are given candy. There's a population of people that are not given candy. So that means it's gonna be a two. We do not have proportion, so it's not prop. Sam means we had two samples. And we don't know the population standard deviation, which you pretty much never will. So that means it's a t-test. So it's going to be number four, two SAMP t-test. Any questions on that? All right, so now I hit enter. We don't have stats, we have data. So I'm going to data and hit enter. List one is L1, list two is L2, freaks one is just fine. Um, this is not a not equal to, this one was a greater than. Just to let you know, in this class, pooled will always be no for us. Okay? You only do pooled, it turns out, if you know the population standard deviations are the same, which you never really do anyway. So pooled is going to be no. Color doesn't matter. Any questions at all before I hit calculate? Okay, let's hit calculate. And notice our important numbers. We have our test statistic is about two. Our p-value is 0.03. Okay, those are the biggies. And we have an x1 bar was 55.5, x2 bar was 28.75. Okay, so notice that the sample mean was much bigger for the first one. Um, and we say it's Hopefully you can see that's, you know, $55.50 versus $28.75. That's a substantial difference if you're um, the owner of the shop. Do you agree? Okay. When it's a substantial difference like that, then we say it's practically significant. There's a difference statistically. So practically means that you look at those numbers and you say that makes a difference. If that's what the numbers, if that, if that was the difference in the population mean, then they're that different, we say it's practically significant. Statistically significant has to do with the p-value. Okay, is it statistically significant? Take a look. Is it statistically significant? So you should all chime in at once, tell me. Okay, we have a p-value of 0 0.03. Okay, and the standard, if you're not given one, the standard is 0 0.05. 0 0.03 is less than 0 0.05. Is that clear? And if the p-value is less than the level of significance, the answer is yes, it is statistically significant. Anyone lost on what I just said? Okay, so now I'm going to go back to paint and we can write down our conclusion. Well, in that one. There is statistically significant. 
evidence to support the claim that the population mean. Notice now we're in population mean, not population proportion. Population mean, um, let's see, and this is amount of money. Customer spend. When given candy, is greater than the population mean. Amount of money. Customers spent, I should spend. When not given candy. Okay, so if you're the manager or the owner, should you give candy? What do you think? Yeah, you should give candy because we found out it made a difference. Okay, not only was it statistically significant, but it was practically significant. Lots of money difference. A piece of candy might be at, you know, 20 cents or something. A buck if it's really good candy, right? Or a piece of candy. So, yeah, that would be something you definitely want to do. Let me ask you, have you ever been to a shop or a place and they gave you a piece of candy or some food? You ever been to one of those? Okay. My guess is you have. <laughs> yeah, like Costco. Costco gives candy. And get, they have done the studies and they found statistically significant evidence that the that when on days they give candy, actually, they people spend more than when they don't give candy or food, whatever it might be, little little extra sweet stuff or extra good food. Okay. And they get more customers, it turns out, too. Okay, so management needs to kind of learn about that stuff. And without statistics, it's just guesswork. You hope it's true, but you have no idea. Now, this specific study, what's wrong with it? Hoping you can all tell me. There's something wrong with this study itself. It's a poorly done study. How come? Yeah, we only have 12 for our sample size. 12 is less than 31, okay? Or less than or equal to 30, one or the other. But we only have 12 in our sample size. So that means you have to assume you have a normal distribution, which is probably wrong. So the only reason why I gave you this example is I didn't want to sit there all day typing in during our webinar. But in the real world, you wouldn't do this. You would make sure that you had at least 31 customers in each maybe more. Any questions at all on this example? Okay, let me do one more example before we talk about the project. It's going to look really similar and it turns out it's really different. Okay, so the question says, are people better listeners if they do not have use of their eyes? 12 volunteers were first given 100 words to remember while they were looking at the person speaking. Then they were given 100 words while they were blindfolded. Each time the participants were asked to write down as many of the words as they could remember. The table below shows the outcome of this study. Okay. It looks very similar, right? We even have a sample, we even have 12. What's, what's very different about this one? Still quantitative, still numbers for data. 
but there's something very different about this one compared to the last one. So I'm going to see, going to pause and see if any of you can tell me. And while you're doing that, I'm going to type in the data. So I don't, you don't have to wait for me to do that, but I'm going to let you think about it. Something very important, very important difference. So I want you to tell me what that difference is. You can put in the chat box, you can talk, however you want. Now let's see if you can tell me again. I'm giving you some time because I'm going to type in the data while you're thinking. What is the big difference between this one and the last one? And it's such a big difference, we're not even going to use the same statistical function. Y'all jumping in, but you should be jumping in at this point. All right, I guess no one figured it out. Okay, the big difference between this one and the last one is if you look at this 14 and this 17, it's the same person, right? We're talking about somebody who is given 100 words. They guessed 14, or they remembered 14 of them, okay, when they were looking at the person. And then they would put a blindfold on their, over their eyes, and they were given another 100 words, and they remembered 17. But it's the same person. Any questions on that? And same thing with this 23 and this 25, that's the same person. So we sometimes call this paired data, also called independent, independent sample, uh, sorry, dependent samples, also called dependent samples. When you have that, this is very different because what we can do is we can actually take this and turn it into a single sample instead of two samples. And what you can do is you can look at the difference between them. You could do 14 minus 17, 23 minus 25, 15 minus 20, 37 minus 37, and look at the difference between the two samples, and we'll end up with a new data set. And we're going to call that the data set of the differences. And because of that, when we talk about the mean, and we talk about the hypothesis test, We're going to have an H naught. And we can talk about the mean difference. So that's mu D, which is, the, which is going to be the looking minus the blind. And we want to find, is that mean difference equal to zero? Any questions on that idea? I'm going to have H1. Okay. And we might note that D is going to, is again, the looking, I'll just call that L for looking, minus the blind. We'll call that D for blind. Any questions on this way of looking at it? And the idea is then we just have one collection of data and we can do what we did last week. So H1 is mu sub D, we're still going to have a zero. And now we got to think about what inequality is it? Any guess? This one's a little tougher. So what inequality is H1 about?
So it's either going to be less than, greater than, or not equal to. Don't all jump in at once, but maybe you can. So what inequality is it? Hopefully all of you can give me an answer. Okay, not equal to. All right, let's take a look. Let's look at some key, the key word here, and it's interesting. We want to find out if people are better listeners if they do not have use of their eyes. So let's look at this first person. This first person was be a better listener if they don't have use of their eyes. Do you see that? Because they remember 17 words without. If you look at L minus B, that's 14 minus 17, which is negative 3, and negative 3 is less than 0. So if they're better listeners blind, then looking minus blind will be negative. Any questions on that? Okay, now I'm going to go to my calculator. And as I mentioned, I was trying to wait. I was hoping you would chime in on knowing the big difference, but you didn't. But at least I got my calculation work done. So let's go to our calculator. And I already put in the data. That's what I was doing while you were hopefully thinking about it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to quit. And that sounds weird, but that's what we're going to do. And then I'm going to go to L1, the second one, and then minus second two for L2. And then I'm going to store that, that sto, into second three, which is L3 and then hit enter. And what that does is in L3, we end up getting all the differences, right? Notice that that, 17, that uh, 14 minus 17 was negative three, that's the first number. And all the rest of them are the other differences. Then we can go to stat, we can go to tests. What test are we gonna use? This is a little tricky, but you might be able to come, come up with it. So what test are we going to use? Yeah, th this is a T test. It's definitely not prop. Prop would mean a yes, no question. And these were numbers. All the data were numbers. Um, the reason why it's a T test instead of a two something is that we're looking at the differences and there's only one set of differences, not two sets. It's going to be a T test. And I hit enter. I have data. Mu naught was zero because we said that mu sub d equals zero for our h naught. Our list is not L1, it's L3. So second three for L3. Freak is still one. And now we wanted it to be less than. So enter on less than and then calculate. Any questions so far? Okay, and you'll notice our test statistic is negative 2.4 about. Our p-value is about 0 0.02. 0 0.02 is less than 0 0.05. So let me go ahead and let's go back to where we can, I can start typing. And we can say, just a second. There is statistically significant evidence to conclude that the population mean Number of words remembered when blindfolded. Is greater than the population mean number of words remembered.
when looking. Any questions on this example? Any questions? Okay, what I want to do now is give you a secret word. Because after that, I'm going to move on and we're going to talk about the project. I've got to write it down, so just one second. The secret word today is dependent. Because this example we just did is a hypothesis test for dependent samples. Because the same people looking as blind. Any questions at all on chapter 10 before I move to the project? Okay, so let's move over to the project and let me get there. Okay, so here's Canvas and let me show you how we're going to find the project information. You go to the syllabus, I think it's the easiest way. And you go to project two. And these are the requirements for project two. The first thing, um, which I think I didn't mention here, but it's the same idea, is that you must work in groups. And recommend you have a group of three. You can work in a group of two, that's fine. You cannot work in a group of four, and you cannot work in a group of one. Okay, has to be two or three. Same as last project. That hasn't changed it even a little bit. You do not have to have the same groups. If you don't have someone to work with that you know of, like maybe you're in the class, but your partners have dropped, or I don't know, you didn't get along with them or something like that, what should you do? Yeah, post a discussion. I'm going to show you something. No one's posted yet, but we'll, that'll change really soon. So notice I have a project to um, discussion forum. So you just go there and then you post your, hey, I need a partner or whatever. Um, don't assume that your partners want to work with you. Make sure you contact them and talk to them and make sure they want to work with you and that they're still in the class because we have lost a few people. Okay. So that's the first thing is get a partner and you can do that today. Um, just to note, let me go here. Project two is due November 24th, okay? November 24th is kind of the Sunday before Thanksgiving week, just to let you know. And today is the sixth, so you have a while still, you have 18 days, but 18 days goes fast. You know how that works, right? So you can start working on it. You now have the information you need because it's really about chapter 10. It's about what we just talked about. So let me go through and Kind of read through at least some of this. So the purpose of project two is to use confidence intervals in hypothesis testing. So it's not project one, it's very different. This is all about confidence intervals and in hypothesis testing. That should be most of your project. Okay, and the idea is once again, you should have a client, I don't think I wrote it in here, but you should have a client that you identify and you should decide on a hypothesis test. Okay, there's a, an order at which you do hypothesis tests. The, what's the first thing you do when you're conducting a hypothesis tests? The very first thing. Let me 
thoughts? Yeah, you write down H naught, and the second thing is you write down H1. Okay. So the first thing you should do after, by the way, after finding partners and making sure that you have the same partners or you found new partners, is you talk to each other and decide on what you want to hypothesize. Just to let you know is that you are going to do a hypothesis test for the difference between two means. Okay, it could be independent or it could be dependent. And that's what we just talked about today. So that's why today is a perfect day to go talking about the um, project. Okay, so make sure that you have quantitative uh, survey. You could either ask a bunch of people two questions, or you can ask two different types of people, two groups, one question and compare. It doesn't have to be people either. This is very different than project one. Project one was all about the sampling technique and making sure you did a survey, et cetera. This could be data that you find on the internet. That's okay. Not about people. It could be measurements you make, whatever it might be, but you should care about it. It should be important. If it's not important, don't do it. If no one cares about the outcome of your test, then it's not, it, it's not, a, it's not a good project. Okay, so you should identify a client and why they care. If no one cares, don't bother. Any questions on that idea? Okay, so that's the idea, is that you have this hypothesis test that you're gonna be doing, and you're also gonna find a confidence interval for the difference between two means. Could be independent, or it could be dependent. The important thing is you know what you're doing, okay? So in other words, if you do dependent, but then you think that they're independent, and you write about independent, it's not right. Okay, and I'm happy to help you. Once you have decided on your null hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis, let me ask you, what do you think you should do next? Any thought? The hint is it's similar to project one in this case. Yeah, yeah, you should go over here, oops, over. Okay, and you as in y'all, you know, you and your partners, because you should have discussed it with each other. And you should post on the Project 2 discussion forum. And then I'll look at it and I'll let you know if it's going to work or not. You should also post how you're going to collect your data. Okay, so, but the main thing is I want to see your hypotheses, not just what your survey question is, but what is your H1? That's the biggie. What's going to be your H1? And then I'll look at your H1 and I'll let you know if that's going to work. So it better be, it better have a mu and another mu. Okay, either a mu sub D or a mu sub 1 and a mu sub 2. Okay, that's important. Any questions on that? So the last two examples I did today, those examples could work. Okay. Just a note is that you're doing a sample. If you can do a census, then it doesn't work for the project. So for example, um, you can't do something like um, um, which team in the Major League Baseball, or does, a, does the National League have a higher, percent, ha higher um, batting average than the American League? What's wrong with that? For last year, since the World Series Series happened a couple weeks ago, for last year's um, Baseball. Okay, it's quantitative, but what's the problem? Yeah, all the data is available. It's very easy to get a, if you can find all the data, then that's not okay. It has to be something you can't find all the data. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, after you've posted and I've looked at it, the next step is decide on what the ramifications or repercussions of a type one and a type two error are. Before you even do your study, before you collect your data, just look at type one and type two error. Based on that, you decide on the level of significance. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, once you've decided on the level of significance, 
then you go and collect your data. But you're not supposed to know decide until you've collected your data. Uh, you, you're not supposed to collect your data until you decide on the level of significance based on the ramifications of a type one and type two error. And you're going to either use a 0 0.01, 0 0.05, or 0.1. Do you remember when you use which? And if you remember, this happened last week. And you remember when you use which level of significance? Yeah, if the type one error is worse than a type two error in terms of the ramifications, use 0 0.01. If the type two error is worse, then use 0 0.1. And if they're about the same, they're both bad, then you use 0 0.05. Okay, and talk, you know, you're going to write about that. Okay, and by the way, this is an order at which you should be writing the paper also, in terms of writing about. It should be in this order. Then, after that, you go collect your data. And again, that could be as simple as going online and finding data. It could be doing a survey of people, you know, around or whatever. Unlike, unlike the, um, Project one, you can collect your data in any way you'd like as long as you tell me, as long as you write down what technique you used. Okay, so convenience sampling is allowed for this project, but you just need to be honest about it and say that you use convenience sampling so there's gonna be some bias and talk about the bias. Okay, if you think there's no bias, even with a good sample, you're wrong. Okay, there's always some bias, but convenience sample has lots of bias. Any questions on that? So you collect your data, and then once you collect your data, then um, you need to put the data in the computer. And let me show you. Okay, here's a spreadsheet. The only difference between this project and project one in terms of the collecting data is you don't use this page. You're going to use this two ver stats page. And then you put your data in first and you put your data in second, whatever you're comparing. Okay. Unlike the calculator, you really don't have to do anything except type in your data and then move your eyeballs. You have to again decide did you use independent or a dependent difference? Okay. Any questions on that? Okay, so whichever you use, you're going to be looking at it. Then you can choose whether you want to write about the confidence interval first or the hypothesis test. That really doesn't matter. There isn't like some special order on confidence interval or hypothesis test. Whichever you want first. So maybe I'll talk about the hypothesis test first since it comes first on the spreadsheet. It doesn't matter. And by the way, your the spreadsheet Whichever columns you're using, whether it's independent or dependent, you need to copy and paste that into your project. Got it? Okay, you're gonna lose an entire grade just for that if you miss it. So you have to have that copied in, it's not hard, but you must do that and that proves you use a spreadsheet. Okay, so I pass this test. So this will probably be a zero and it will tell you what your p-value is. Notice it has p-value two-tailed, p-value right-tailed, p-value left-tailed. It gives you all three, but you have to know which one you're doing, and that has to do with your H1. So if your H1 has a less than, it's a left-tailed. If your H1 has a not equal to, it's a two-tailed. And if it's a greater than, it's a right-tailed. Any questions? So you're only going to have one of these you're going to be looking at, but you have to know which one to look at. T-value is your test statistic. Okay, and then you'll notice this guy right here. Do you remember what standard error meant? Remember standard error. Okay, just, just want to let you know that standard error is the most important statistic of the entire project. So if you don't remember, then you need to review it. 
and I'll show you how to do that in a bit. Okay, so you're going to write an entire, you're going to have, you're going to have writing about the standard error throughout the entire paper. Okay, so that's really important. Okay, any questions on that so far? Then you have your confidence interval. So you're going to write about your hypothesis test, do all the writing about the hypothesis, don't mix them. Okay, then you write about the confidence interval, or you can do confidence interval first and then do hypothesis test, but don't mix them up. You choose your level of confidence, and what you want to do is you can compare it. It's really easy to change this. So there's your 90%. You could just type in 95, and there's your 95% confidence interval. You could type in 99, and then there is your 99% confidence interval. Any questions? Okay, really important is that I want you to look at all of them and then make a decision on which one you should use. And that's gonna depend on what you've got. And then you're gonna use that one and explain why you use that one instead of the others. Okay. And you're gonna be talking about how the standard error relates to the, hypo the hypothesis test and how the standard error relates to the confidence interval and how the standard error is just by itself. Because that's gonna be important. If you do dependent, it's basically the same. There's still a standard error here, okay? And you still have all the other stuff here. Any questions at all on the spreadsheet? All right, let me go back to the requirements. So the main thing in your whole project, okay, are gonna be this bullet point, confidence interval, and this bullet point hypothesis test. Most of your project should be that. Most of the content needs to be that. The rest are minor. Okay. Any questions on this? Okay, notice that I know that standard error is confusing. So because of that, I made a video just on the standard error and how it relates to the project. I'm gonna let you watch the video. But if you click that, it's on YouTube and it's a it's almost, it's almost 15 minutes long, okay? There's a lot about the standard error, okay? So, and this is just an example, but your example, you know, don't just use the words from this example. Make sure that you're doing it for your example. Any questions at all about that? Okay, you should um, talk about the assumptions briefly. Okay, and it's really important to look at your p-value, and I want you to say, based on the p-value, do you think you need a smaller standard error, or are you satisfied with the standard error based on the p-value? And the only way to get a smaller standard error is a larger sample size, and you have to talk about that. Okay, and then throughout the project, just like project one, I want to hear not just mathematics, but I want to hear about how this is used, okay? After looking at the confidence interval, what is your, what decision will your client make? After looking at the results of the hypothesis test, what decision will your client make? Does that make sense? So that's not just in the conclusion of the paper, but throughout the entire paper. Okay, talk about all that stuff. After looking at the standard error, what decision will the client make? Okay, so all of the different things that you can be talking about, what decision will the client make? Okay, this is not project one. There's no histogram. There's no stem and leaf plot, none of that stuff. Okay, you don't have to get into the quartiles. Those aren't important. The only important statistic, there's the standard error. I told you that's important. And the means or the mean difference, if you're doing a uh, dependent, those are important because that's the whole point of the, of the project is you're looking at H naught is going to be difference between the means. And the confidence interval is a difference between the means. Okay, just to note throughout the paper, here's some words you're going to put in here. Population mean. Okay, those, if the, those two words 
need to be in the paper many, many, many times. Sometimes you'll say the population mean of this one was bigger than this one or smaller than this one. Sample mean, that's the other one that you're going to have. Sample mean for this one was bigger than this one. Okay, any questions on that? Okay, notice again. that this project is due on the 24th. Does that mean that you should be writing it on the 24th? What do you think? Should you be writing this paper on the 24th? Yeah, definitely not, okay. When should you have it written by, for sure? I'm looking at my calendar. When should you have it written by? Not the 23rd, Alex, definitely not. Way before that. Yeah, the 20th. Because just like project one, if you email it to me by the 20th, okay, then I'll take a look at it and give you advice and suggestions, okay? It's very hard to get an A on this paper, even a B on this paper, if you don't show me and, I don't, and you don't get my suggestions, okay? Getting the suggestions ha on your final grade is not when you want the suggestions. You want it on the 20th. It could be the 19th. That's fine too, by the way. Same as project one, first come, first serve. So whoever, whoever emails me their draft first, I read first. And the ones that come in last, I read last. And if it comes in 21st or later, I don't read it. Okay, then I'll look at any posts you put on the, the discussion forum, but I won't read the draft. That's my rule. Okay, so that's the same policy as before. Makes a huge difference to have your draft read. Okay, so that's the project. Any questions at all about project two? Any questions? Okay, any questions? Okay, if there are not any questions, then we'll call it a night. Um, but I'm always happy to answer questions if you Still have some questions. So let me stop the share. So if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer. If not, we can call it, we can say goodnight. And unlike last week, it's, out, it's already dark <laughs> outside. It's gonna be a dark walk home tonight. Any questions? Okay. You have a good night too. And again, I'll be um, grading these exams. And um, that's, a, that's my project over the next two or three days is grading. And, I'll, let, and you'll, I'll give you feedback. I might even give you a voice recorded feedback if the, my microphone works. So any questions at all? Tina or Alex? Armando, Peter, Guadalupe? Good night, Alex. Okay, so if you run out of time on the exam, what that might mean is that you need to, when you're practicing, try and make sure you're Practicing writing at a little faster pace, and that should help. So you're probably not the only one that ran out of time, but the final will be the same amount of time and about the same length. So you know, get get used to writing a little faster, and you know, attacking the problem a little bit faster. Do your best on that.
Any questions? Okay, good night, Tina. And you have a good night, Armando. And Peter, any questions, Peter? Last chance, we'll call it a good night for everyone. Okay, for all of you watching this as an archived uh, video, um, make sure you have a project partner and make sure you post your project ideas on the project discussion um, board and post on the Q&A if you have any questions about chapter 10. So have a great night.